Thank you for taking the HistoryBuff.com virtual tour of the Betsy Ross House in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My name is Rick, and I will be your tour guide today. The front portion of the home was built around 1740, with the stair hall and the rear section being added 10 to 20 years later. The structure is a variation of a bandbox style house, with one room on each floor and the winding staircase stretching from the cellar to the upper levels. The building's front facade, with a large window on the first floor to display merchandise, and its proximity to the Delaware River, made it an ideal location for a business. In fact, the house served both as a business and a residence for many different shopkeepers and artisans for more than 150 years. The first floor front room was used as the workshop and showroom. The business owner and his or her family lived in the rest of the house. By the 18th century, the house was occupied by a shoemaker, a shopkeeper, an apothecary, and of course, most famously, an upholsterer. It is believed that Betsy Ross lived here from 1773 to 1785. By the 19th century, a German immigrant family by the name of Mund moved into the building and ran various types of businesses from it, including a tailor shop, a cigar store, and a tavern. We are now in the Betsy Ross parlor. With its tile-framed fireplace and elegantly decorated walls, the parlor was the room of the house where guests would be received and entertained. It was this room on a historic afternoon in the summer of 1776 that Betsy Ross likely entertained three very important guests. Sitting around her parlor table that day were George Ross, her late husband's uncle, financier Robert Morris, and General George Washington. They had been appointed to have a flag made for the new country. Colonel Ross had prepared a rough drawing of the proposed flag design. Betsy Ross offered some changes, and the committee agreed. We are now in the Betsy Ross bedroom. Note the chair with the flag draped over it. Remember that this is the home where Betsy lived when she made our first flag. She likely sewed the flag in this room. If it was discovered by the British that she was sewing the flag, she could be guilty of treason. If she did the actual work on the first floor, she was in danger that British soldiers could spy on her or walk in unannounced and catch her in the act. Fabrics of the 18th century were very expensive. The curtains around the bed could be drawn closed in the winter to keep the heat in. In the summer, they could close the mosquito netting to keep the insects out. The Venetian blinds that cover the windows might seem out of place here, but they were actually an 18th century invention. We are now in the second bedroom. It is not known exactly who slept in the bedroom. Betsy and her family may have shared this house with its owners or boarders. At the time, it was common to share sleeping quarters with other families. Betsy's first husband, John Ross, died of injuries he received in the Revolutionary War. She then married Joseph Ashburn, a mariner, who died after a long voyage at sea. Her third husband was John Claypool. We are now in the Betsy Ross storage room. Since it was in the basement and had bricks for flooring, foodstuffs that could spoil were kept here until needed. It was also a storage room for her bolts of upholstery fabric. In addition to making flags and upholstering furniture during the Revolutionary War, Betsy Ross assembled ammunition cartridges for the Revolutionary Army. The cartridges would be carefully filled with black powder and then wrapped in paper and tied together with twine. We are now in the Betsy Ross upholstery shop. While Betsy is famous for sewing the first flag, she was also an upholsterer. She was an apprentice with a master upholsterer when she was only 12 years old. It was while being an apprentice that she met John Ross, her first husband. Since he was of the Anglican faith and Betsy was a Quaker, they were forbidden to get married. Betsy converted to the Anglican faith. Sadly, John Ross died only three years after their wedding. On the table, there are some of the tools that Betsy Ross used in her upholstery shop. In addition to a yardstick, thimble, and thread, there is also a two-pronged wooden tool, better known as a Weber. It was used to stretch the burlap straps that hold up a chair's padded seat. We are now in the Betsy Ross kitchen. Note that the fireplace is larger in this room than the others in the house. This was because a larger one was needed to hang the cook's pots and other utensils. How long it took to prepare a meal depended on how close the pots were to the flame. 
It was the children's job to keep the fire burning all day. If it went out, it would take longer to restart the fire and get the flames hot enough to cook.